Welcome back. This is uh, part two of the meditation trilogy, Zen master Dan McAdam dishing out the advice. Um, today I want to talk about how I ended up doing a uh, three-part video series about meditation uh, when not so long ago as I mentioned yesterday, uh, the very thought of this type of practice uh, brought me out in a bit of a cold sweat. And for me, um, it has been two things mainly, two main experiences and uh, things that I was exposed to. And that's what today's episode's all about, because I want to put it in context a little bit. So the first... Um, experience, shall we call it, um, is actually not a very pleasant one. Um, about two years ago, uh, I was on a family holiday and unfortunately, uh, me and my dad had a rather tasty falling out. Um, it had probably been coming for some time um, and in hindsight now, uh, I'm delighted to say we're, we're kind of you know, back on the same page. And I think we, looking back on it, we probably both needed it, me much more so than him. Um, but the reason I'm talking about it is during this final altercation, the straw that broke the camel's back, if you will, I had the opportunity to get a number of things off my chest, um, which I am pretty sure I'd been harboring and carrying around uh, pretty much all my life. And although the fallout after this pretty, you know, big, uh, problematic family event was uh, very unpleasant, uh, everyone around me was upset um, and worried and concerned, I had this really unique, surreal experience where I'd kind of removed this trauma from my life. And in the chaos of it all, um, to be honest, I never ever felt better. Um, I, I, I don't even think I've got the vocabulary to be able to kind of articulate how I was feeling. Um, I know that I'd never ever felt like it before. And since then, um, to be honest, I've been on a bit of a quest to attempt to charter a path back to that feeling. Um, and the closest I can get to describing what I'm talking about, it was almost like a level of euphoria. Um, it, it wasn't joy, it wasn't happiness, it was just this level of awareness that was just so unreal. It, it really was. Um, I, I since learned from a friend of mine who is uh, much farther down this road than me, that what I experienced has actually got a name. Uh, it's called a spiritual awakening. Uh, however, for the sake of this video and for the benefit of the majority of my viewers, we're just going to say I felt great. Absolutely great. So that really opened my mind and eyes to the fact that this whole kind of unlocking elements of your mind and spirituality and mindfulness um, was no longer probably a thing um, because I had had lived it. Uh, I certainly felt as though I'd lived it. Um, I, I knew it now to be factual. Um, and that really, really turned me from a kind of sceptic into almost like I wanted to be possibly a student and I wanted to find out um, what that was all about, why that happened to me, how my mind switched to that place. Um, so that was the first thing for me. Uh, the second thing was uh, a good friend of mine uh, told me to listen to a podcast. Uh, a podcast show is called Tim Ferriss. I actually think it's one of the biggest podcasts in the world. And he had a guest on there called Jack Cornfield. Uh, Cornfield with a K. And Jack is like some kind of crazy Western Zen master. You know, you've got to listen to what this, this guy's been up to. Um, 
unbelievable. You know, you'll go on retreats for like three years where, where they don't talk. They're silent retreats. And, you know, he, he's, he practiced as a monk for, for years on end. Um, and now Jack's kind of come back down to earth. He is very, very much involved in kind of bringing those kind of practices to the Western world. And I was listening to this podcast. It's a long old podcast. It's about two and a half hours long, I have to warn you. So I kind of do it in stages when you're in your car or, you know, when you've got a bit of downtime. Really fascinating, really, really fascinating to listen to this guy. Um, he told a story of when he went over to, uh, he was either in India or China and he was, he was visiting a, like a, a Buddhist temple. Um, and he told a story how he had a translator with him and they were talking to a Zen master, an actual Zen master. Um, he probably drinks no end of kale. And um, they were discussing what they wanted to achieve by taking meditation and mind mindfulness back to the Western world. And one of the questions Jack wanted to ask this Zen master, and one of the, one of the issues he wanted to raise was just how uh, much of a concern it is in the Western world um, of how much we hate on ourselves, how much we doubt ourselves, how much we kind of, you know, body shame ourselves, how much we constantly think we're not good enough. And when the translator told this Zen master about this particular issue in the Western world, to begin with, Jack thought that the translator wasn't able to explain properly because the Zen master was looking at them both like blankly, like as if they'd gone mad. And it transpired that the reason the Zen master couldn't relate is because in this Buddhist community, that concept, now get on this, the concept of self-hatred, self-doubt, didn't exist. It just doesn't exist there. Like that, that you know, let that sink in. That, that is the equivalent of like them coming over here and having a chat with us and saying, you know, we really wish you could help us because when someone dies, we just can't stop laughing. We find it hilarious. And then we're all at the funeral and we're just all crying with laughter because it's just so funny. And we wish we could change it. Like, let that sink in. They, they, the way they live has created this ecosystem where what is one of the biggest problems in the Western world, this self-doubt, just doesn't exist. So that really took me, those two things, that experience on holiday, and this, this realisation that other human beings are doing things that we aren't, that can create a culture where there's no such thing as self-doubt or self-hatred. For me, you've got to be interested in what they're doing, right? You, you, you just have to be. I think you certainly should be, and you should certainly open your mind to being if you're not currently. So they were the two significant moments where I decided I really need to find out more. And then I went on a real mission to find um, the correct starting point. And this is where I want to end today. And if you haven't really taken a great deal of notice of anything I've just said, please make a note of this book, because this book is for us. <laughs> and when I say us, I mean the type of people who aren't that convinced to begin with. And it's a book by an author called Dan Harris. And the book is called <laughs> Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics. Now, I've read this book a couple of times. Um, you can probably tell by the title um, and it gets better when you read it. It is literally word perfect. Really, really nice entry point, fantastic read. And if for anyone who's interested in getting into this, please give the book a go. Again, apologies, two minutes over. Maybe I'm gonna do this once a week, but I really hope you've enjoyed today. Cheers, see you tomorrow.